you're going to Disney World and you're wanting to stay somewhere affordable, close to the parks and super groovy because groovy is always part of the criteria. But is the most retro and far out resort on Disney World property really the vibe you're searching for? We're going to find out. Hey everybody, it's AJ for Disney Food Vlog. Today, we are getting hip with Disney's most radical value hotel. Disney's Pop Century Resort is totally tubular, right? Yeah, yeah, I promise to cool it with the terminology, maybe. Pop Century is all about the nostalgic, larger than life decorations repping the last few decades, because how often can you tell someone you had to walk up the stairs of a giant yo-yo in order to get to your hotel room? Although Disney's value resorts can save you quite a bit of money, will cutting costs mean cutting out some of the most important parts of your vacation? We're going going for a cruise across the 1950s to 1990s timeline to find out if this is the best hotel for you. Now, before we get into all the nitty gritty details of Pop Century, let's talk about that term value for a second. Disney World's value resorts are the most budget friendly for sure, but they also offer the fewest amenities and have the smallest rooms as compared to Disney's moderate and deluxe hotel rooms. But don't stick your nose up at Pop Century just yet. Just because you'll get less than you will over at one of Disney's other resorts doesn't mean you're missing out on the essentials for your stay, including some mighty fine Pop Century perks that some of the other value resorts don't even have. Plus, let's not discount that extra money in your wallet. All right, heading over to Pop Century. Disney really took the phrase go big or go home to heart with this one. Nothing is small here, literally. Well, except you. You'll kind of feel small when you stand next to those gigantic bowling pins and Rubik's Cubes. Now, when you think of Pop Century, you're going to think family friendly. Picture huge icons, bright colors, timeless themes. The 1950s area pays homage to the highlights of that decade, like sock hop dancers, Lady and the Tramp, and the biggest jukebox you've ever seen. If you're watching this and you don't know what a jukebox is, ask a grown up and make and feel really old. Now there's also a lot of love for bowling here. Not only are there giant bowling pin staircases, but there's also a bowling pin shaped pool. It's the 10th pin, by the way, for you to dip into. If you're part of a bowling squad back home, this might have just sealed the deal for you. The 1960s are all about flower power. Expect to see copious amounts of tie-dye and the largest Play-Doh container in yo-yos ever. You can also pose next to Baloo and Mowgli from the Jungle Book before you jump into the centerpiece of this area, the Hippy Dippy Pool. Yeah, that's really, really the name of this one. And you thought my groovy lingo was cheesy. You can cruise into the 1970s via a big wheel fit for a giant, and you might recognize a staple from your childhood. Did you have one of those Mickey Mouse rotary phones in your house? Because you'll find a towering one here. Talk about nostalgia. And if you've ever wished to be one of the little foosball players in a foosball game, then A, weird wish, but we'll refrain from judgment, and B, you're in luck. There's a field of life-size foosball in this section of the hotel that might be nightmarish to some, but really cool to others. If music is more your style than sports or games, Games, the massive eight track tapes will be right up your alley. What can you expect from the 1980s section? Rubik's Cubes, Pac-Man, Roger Rabbit, and Walkmans. And the final decade depicted at Pop Century, those 90s is where you're gonna see technology start to evolve. The computer pool, floppy disks, and massive cell phones here don't even hold a candle to all the technology used in Disney World today. A planning service that knows all about your preferences, fingerprint recognition, RFID scanning, not a chance. Still, Pop Century really illustrates how the 90s were established stone into what technology has become today. Fun fact, there was actually supposed to be a second part to Disney's Pop Century Resort. Phase two was going to feature the years between 1900 and 1940, but instead that plan was scrapped and morphed into what we know now as Disney's Art of Animation Resort, which is a topic for a different day, has a lot to do with recessions, and it's not nearly as fun to talk about that as it is to talk about Pop Century. But honestly, um, who wants to stay in a prohibition themed hotel, right? Okay, now there you go. But what does value really mean? Okay, when Disney throws around the word value, I think of that quote from Princess Bride. You keep saying that word. I don't think it means what you think it means. I'm not saying that value resorts aren't charging you less than what you're gonna pay at Disney's Polynesian Village or Grand Floridian Resort. But honestly, many things in life are cheaper than a full vacation stay at either of those deluxe resorts, like a house payment, for instance. At Disney's Pop Century, a standard room is gonna cost you between $200 and $270 per night, with some of the highest prices slapped onto the holiday season, peaking out at $300 per night. And if you're like, 
but what I really want is a pool view. Then you'll be tacking on an extra 10 to 15 more per night. Plus, gotta be real with you, pool views at the value resorts, they can be a lot noisier. Lots of families splishing and splashing right outside your window late into the night. Not to mention, none of the rooms at Pop Century have private balconies, so to be able to see that pool view you're paying extra for, you're gonna have to keep your curtains open, which overlook the public walkway outside your room. And if you can see out, other people can see in. So if privacy is more important than a pool view, skip the pool view and save your money. If you'd rather have a preferred room, which will keep you close to the resort's lobby, dining, and transportation, expect to pay more around 240 to 285 per night and 350 during the holiday season. The preferred rooms are a great option if you wanna be closer to all the action and keep your daily step count to a minimum, but much like the pool view rooms, these preferred rooms are placed at another location with high traffic. These areas might be loud and busier, so if you have sensitive sleepers or generally prefer some peace and quiet in the mornings instead of waking up to the sounds of pitter-pattering feet, giggling on the pathways outside, and maybe some grumbling from the early risers that haven't had their cup of joe just yet, this might not be the best choice for you either. Now let's talk about the rooms. You're not gonna find towering Disney icons or oversized toys from the yesteryears in your hotel room, but what you will find is sleek design work in a rather standard hotel room. The rooms were refurbished about five years ago to give them a more modern look with pops of color here and there and Disney-ish accents, of course. Like other value resorts, the rooms are around 250 square feet. Does square feet mean anything to you? Yeah, fair enough. It just sounds like a number to me too. For comparison's sake, rooms at Disney's deluxe resorts fall into the 400 square foot range and are nice and spacious, so you're definitely sacrificing a lot of your wiggle room here. The rooms at Pop Century sleep up to four adults with either two queen beds or one king bed. Note, if you really are traveling with four adults, you're really gonna feel like you're stacked on top of each other in these rooms. Things will feel cramped, especially since there's only one bathroom that all four of you have to share. So, so this is a more preferable option for a family of two adults, two kiddos. One of the queen beds is actually a Murphy bed that will transform into a table area when it's folded up. So not a bad place to eat something quick in the room before heading back out to the pool or another one of the parks. The room may be on the smaller side and there may only be one bathroom for everyone to share, but the good, and I mean really good, part of this bathroom is that it's split. The sink and vanity area is separate from the toilet and shower area, which is really handy when you're scrambling to freshen up in the mornings or brush your teeth and get your jammies on at night. Still crowded? Sure. But more manageable? Also yes. What else do these rooms have? There's a closet area and a large set of drawers for any storage you might need. This is where I tend to cram my dirty laundry because I'm classy with a capital C. And if you're thinking the rooms are going to be just as vibrant as what you've been seeing around the outside of the hotel, you might be disappointed. Rooms are pretty plain when it comes to decor, definitely not as vibrant in color, which for some of us, neutrals are better. But there is a brightly colored light fixture above the beds that features the Fab Five. All in all, Pop Century rooms provide the bare necessities you'll need to make sure you have a comfortable stay. You've got a mini fridge, which to be fair, Disney hotels didn't always have those, and a coffee maker that comes with packets of Joffrey's coffee, creamers, and sugar packets to start the day off right. If you're not planning on living it up at your hotel during your vacation, Pop Pop Century's limited amenities are enough to keep you comfy. However, if you're someone who sees the hotel as part of the whole vacation ordeal and you want to spend time lounging in your room during break days, you might not be so keen on the overall cramped feel and basic style. But remember, you're still on Disney World property. We got some perks coming. We'll talk about this in a second. So what are the best rooms available at Pop Century? Well, it depends on what matters most to you. There are 10 different buildings you could potentially stay in. Buildings 1, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 10 are going to give you the easiest access to classic halls which holds the lobby, food court, and gift shop. Buildings 1, 2, 8, and 9 are closest to parking lots, which can be extremely helpful if you plan on driving yourself to and from the parks every day. And buildings 4 and 5 are closest to the Skyliner. As far as quiet rooms go, that's few and far between here, but what I can tell you is that you're going to have a whole lot more commotion if you're near the lobby or the main pool. I'm not saying it's going to be like ear shattering where you won't be able to get a wink of sleep, but if you're a light sleeper, you're going to want to bring a white noise machine or earplugs just in case the party is getting hot over at the hip dippy pool. Based on proximity alone, buildings 7, 8, and 9 are furthest away from all the action, meaning a longer walk for you, but a potentially more peaceful stay overall. So Pop Century is located in the ESPN Wide World of Sports Resort area. No idea where that actually is? Let me clue you in. ESPN Wide World of Sports is the complex where many of the sporting events in Disney World takes place. It's basically on the outskirts of property. Pop Century itself sits right across from Disney's Art of Animation Resort on the other side of Hourglass Lake. You'll have easy access to Disney's Hollywood Studios and Epcot, but Magic Kingdom and Animal Kingdom might be a bit of a bus ride away, but still not too shabby. 
Speaking of transportation, there's a major downfall of most value hotels, and that's their measly complimentary transportation option. Notice I said option, as in singular, as in only one, unless you're planning on driving yourself around Disney World property, but let's pretend that's out of the picture, you know, for funsies. For most of Disney's value resorts, buses are the one and only option for getting around. Pop Century, though, doesn't play by those rules. Not entirely, that is. Yes, you still have to rely on buses and buses alone to get to Magic Kingdom, Animal Kingdom, and Disney Springs, which will take you around 15 minutes or so to get you from point A to point B. Fortunately, there's only one bus stop at Pop Century and that's located at the front of the hotel so you won't have to add an extra 20 minutes to your travel time picking up guests from all around the hotel like some of those moderate resorts. However, when you're traveling to Epcot and Hollywood Studios, you'll have direct access to these parks via the Skyliner. The Disney Skyliner is Disney World's Sky Gondola transportation system. It's a quick and easy way to get over to Epcot, Hollywood Studios, and any of the other connected Skyliner hotels. Plus, it's fun to fly across the different sections of the Disney properties and wave at the traffic down below. But the Skyliner is not without its faults. First of all, if you're afraid of heights, you're probably not going to be thrilled to travel across a wire 60 feet above the ground for an extended period of time. What can make these fears even worse is if the Skyliner has to pause for whatever reason, leaving you suspended in midair for a couple of minutes longer. Also during heavy storms, which Florida is no stranger to, the Skyliner will have to temporarily shut down. Not only can this unexpectedly delay your travels, but if the storms don't let up by the end of your park day, you may have to rely on bus transportation to get back to your hotel. Now, if you're not afraid of heights and the weather decides to play in your favor, then having access to the Skyliner gives Pop Century a huge edge compared to the other value resorts. Okay, I'm sure the Skyliner wowed you and all, but let's not forget we're still at a value resort here, folks, and that's super apparent when you hit up the Everything Pop Shopping and Dining. Everything Pop Shopping and Dining will be your one-stop destination for eating at Pop Century. So let's talk about the pros of an easy-to-access gift shop slash food court combo. First off, resort food courts tend to cater to all sorts of taste buds. Everything Pop is no different. They have seven stations that switch out for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And what's on the menu? Plenty of staples like burgers and chicken, entrees like roasted turkey and sandwiches, and sandwiches, pizza and pasta, salads, and a grab-and-go selection for pastries and snacks. So there's no problem here, really. The food is fine, but it's certainly nothing to write home about. And it's a great option for a quick breakfast before heading out to the parks. It'll get you a convenient snack or a late-night dining option after a long day. But if you're truly looking for a unique Disney dining at its finest, yeah, you're not going to find that here. This is a pretty typical theme park spread. Although I must say the tie-dye cheesecake is a very fun and completely unique to Pop Century dessert to order. Really gets you into that hip and groovy spirit. And this has been here since Pop Century opened, which I remember because I'm very old. Speaking of hip, if you're craving a cold drink while hanging out by the hippy dippy pool, you can find cocktails, beer, wine, and a selection of seasonal specialty drinks at the Petals Pool Bar. Now, besides giving you a place to crash for the night and having colorful things to ogle, what else can Pop Century do for you? Well, much like all the hotels on Disney property, Pop Century has that lovely early theme park entry benefit, which allows you to enter any of the four theme parks on any day, 30 minutes before the parks officially open for the rest of the public. You just need to have a park pass. And trust me, there's a lot you can accomplish ride-wise in that extra half hour, so take advantage of it if you've got it. Pop Century also has Wi-Fi connection for all your social media needs and laundry services for your I'm sick of smelling my dirty socks needs. And of course, like I've mentioned time and again, a big selling point of this hotel is that it's the cheapest Disney hotel on the Skyliner route, which sounds like a weird senior superlative for a Disney hotel when I say it out loud, but it's very important. All right, we're going to talk activities next, and I guess the giant Mr. and Mrs. Potato Head and the enormous Rubik's Cube are not entertaining enough for you. Though it's fun to have mini photo shoots with all the fun decor, there are definitely other ways you can kill time at Pop Century. I will take the opportunity to say Hippy Dippy Pool every chance I can get, so remember, the resort has multiple pools, including Hippy Dippy, to cool off and splash around in. If you're not interested in getting the kiddos all drenched before heading on back to the parks or over to Disney Springs, you can always let them burn off some of that excess energy at Pop Century's Little Play ground. In the evenings, you can catch one of the movies under the stars, a free resort activity where you can chill out and watch a fan favorite Disney film. Need to jog for a bit? Pop Century's got a cozy jogging trail with a fantastic view of the lake. And of course, here you can get a little souvenir shopping done at Everything Pop. Now here's a rare DFB tip for you. You can actually see the Epcot fireworks from here if you're at the right place at the right time. The best spots to try and see Epcot's Harmonious are from the top floor of the 50s and 60s building. It may not be the best view ever, but it's still a fun perk for this value resort stay. 
So is Pop Century worth pinching your pennies? Celebrate the decades if you just need a place to crash each night. Pop Century is great if you're satisfied with the basics. It's got beds, AC, food, transportation. If you don't need anything fancy and plan on spending most of your vacation in the parks, a room here will get the job done. Maybe you want access to the Disney Skyliner. Though we appreciate the complimentary Disney buses, it's nice to have other modes of transportation available too. And I will tell you, from years of staying at Pop Century and Art of Animation, having the Skyliner there really opens up the game. When I've stayed at those resorts previously, I kind of felt locked in, like I only had options on the campus of those resorts. Now that I've got the Skyliner, you've got access to so many hotels with great dining, you've got quick access to Hollywood Studios and Epcot, and you just feel much more connected to the rest of property. It's very, very nice. And maybe you're looking to stay at a resort that screams, we are in Disney World, because so many bright pops of color, giant icons, and familiar characters are all around Pop Century Resort. If you want your kiddos to be hyped about the trip ahead of them right from the get-go. Lean on Pop Century's bold and colorful design work. All right, you might not want to stay at Pop if you're not planning on using the Skyliner. Pop Century can run a higher price tag than the All-Star Value Resort simply because it's got the Skyliner benefit so close by. But if you're afraid of heights or don't really plan on visiting Hollywood Studios or Epcot during your trip, then you may be able to save even more money by booking a stay at a resort that doesn't hug that Skyliner path. And maybe you're wanting access to more food options. Granted, you're only a Skyliner away from many other great resort dining options, like Disney's Riviera or even Disney's Yacht and Beach Club. But again, if you really don't want to use the Skyliner and you want a hotel with a better variety of table and signature service restaurants, then everything pop probably isn't going to impress you much. And maybe you're at Disney for a special stay, a honeymoon, anniversary, or adults-only getaway. Pop is definitely an upbeat, family-friendly resort, but it's not a romantic place. Things can get a little rowdy, and the -the over-the-top decorations around the building might feel a little cheesy. So if you're looking for a hotel with fine dining, quiet poolsides, luxurious views, yeah, this isn't it. Not to mention value resorts like Pop appeal to large groups like band members and cheerleaders and sports teams, so it isn't uncommon to see large groups of kids running rampant around the hotel. And if you're trying to catch a Magic Kingdom bus, when a group of 50 plus students are already at the bus stop waiting to get to Magic Kingdom 2, you're probably going to have to end up waiting for the next bus, which could be another 20 to 25 minutes, if not longer. So don't worry, honeymooners, I know deluxe resorts can be expensive for newlyweds, but maybe you can consider a hotel that's kind of in the middle, a little nice but a little less expensive. For a more relaxing and amenity-friendly option, you might want to consider one of Disney's moderate resorts like Port Orleans Riverside or Coronado Springs. Those are going to give you a balance between that classy stay and a less expensive stay than those deluxe offerings. Okay, all in all, I'd say I'm part of the Pop Century fan club. It's one of my favorites of the value resorts because it's colorful, it's convenient, and it's the most affordable Skyliner resort option out there. Is it a hotel I want to stay at every visit? No, but that's because every Disney World trip is different than the last, meaning you need to figure out what this upcoming trip is going to look like for you and find out whether this groovy, far out, and swankalicious resort is going to fit the bill. All right, everyone, thanks for listening and thanks for watching. As always, this is AJ for Disney Food Blog, and we'll see you real soon.